you, you told me a story um, about a water pistol. Oh yes, yes. Electricity. Yes. Uh, this was in Las Vegas during the time of That's the Way It Is. But all of us were upstairs on the top two floors of the International Hotel, which, which now the Hilton, yep. Las Vegas Hilton, but at that time it was the International. And we were all up there and we were playing cowboys and Indians. Well, to be more politically correct, cowboys and Native Americans. I don't want to make anybody mad. And we all had water pistols and we we're shooting everybody and, and uh, just having a great time up there. Raising all just all kinds of habit, and pretty soon it came time, right around four, three, or five, when all of us needed to go get something to eat and get ready to go down to the stage area and our dressing rooms and get dressed for the show. All right, everything went fine. All of us did what we were supposed to do. We're downstairs. We get dressed in our show clothes. We're up. We're on our our cart that pulled out. The band is up a little bit higher, and we're right in front of the orchestra. Two thousand and one goes up. Dun dun dun. Ta da. Okay, the curtain comes up, Elvis walks out, the lights are down, except for the light on the microphone and on Elvis. And here he comes, resplendent in, in white, looking so good. And he walks out, and he had that grin on his face that I told you about that he couldn't, he, he knew immediately that he was up to no good. Yeah. That he, there was some mischief coming, but you didn't know who it was going to be directed to or at. Here he comes, and he's looking great. And out of the corner of my eye, I mean, we're playing. We're doing the vamp in the key of A for That's All Right Mama or CC Rider, which is the same thing. Yeah. And here he comes, and he's looking. His eyes are going back and forth like this, you know. And he's got something in his left hand, but I can't see what it is, and I don't care. You know, he's walking like he used to do, strut down on the stage. He stops directly in front of me, all right? right in front of me and out of his left hand, he shoots me dead center in the middle of my electric guitar with a water pistol. Yeah. Now, it doesn't take brain surgeon mentality or a rocket scientist to know that water and electricity are not good bedmates, yeah. all right? So there's a blue arc. I used to wear two metal finger picks here. And I used a flat pick. So the, the current between the electricity or the electric electronic, excuse me, in my guitar and my metal finger picks was a blue arc. And I got a, a hell of a shock, if you want to know the truth <laughs> of it. <laughs> it knocked me back about a foot, and I'm, wow, you know. And he's still standing there, and this, this is all in a period of probably 10, 15 seconds of that. Yeah. And I look at him and say, Elvis, why did you do that? And the kid in him said, because I have a water pistol and you don't. Na 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 na. <laughs> like a little kid, you know. And he smiled and walked on, and the evil grin went away and went over and Charlie put his guitar on him and went up to the microphone and the magic began. Okay, John, what, what's your memories of Colonel Parker? Uh, Colonel Parker was a manipulator. He used Elvis unmercifully for his own personal gain. He didn't care about Elvis the person. He cared about how much money he could get out of Elvis uh, the more times Elvis went on stage, the more money was generated for him to take and gamble in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm. So I don't have, there's no love lost between me and Colonel Parker <laughs> at, that, at that point at all. But in fairness, I, I should say, give credit where credit's due, he was the shrewdest businessman I ever met. He was also the most unethical uh, businessman I ever came across. And to me, that's unacceptable. Yeah. That's fair enough. On a, on a, on a happier note, uh -huh. what are your memories of the time? Because I think everyone that's watching this DVD has seen it. What are your memories of uh, the making of uh, That's the Way It Is? Oh man, that was that a fun time? Whoa, <laughs> that was a great time. Uh, that was a time when Elvis was at his all-time happiest. He was back. Mm. You know, he, of course, he'd never left as far as I was concerned, but uh, he was back and uh, he was having fun. He was doing exactly what he was put on this earth to do, which was entertain people in an audience and worldwide on his records. He was back. He was happy. He was singing again. He was working every single day, working on his voice. And he, sometimes he'd drag us out of bed and say, get, get your acoustic guitars up here and get a piano player up here. I'm ready to sing up to his suite. Yeah. And he'd rehearse and rehearse and get his voice right where he needed it. 
Because it come in the rehearsal sections, they've got on film. Oh, yeah. It looks like you're just having a one big party. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. He, and like I said, this was his happy, the happiest time in his life. He was do, finally doing what he wanted to do. He looked fantastic. Oh, he would. Did he look yeah. wonderful? He did in that, that, that yeah. movie. He looked great. He was at a perfect weight, and his health was just great. Uh, and again, mentally, he was happy. Mm. He was on top of the world. Uh, and he was happy because he, the fans were right behind him all the way. What What's the funniest stories you've got about this? You, you can remember the, oh, the, the crazy times. So many it? crazy times, yes. Um, well, let me let me tell you let me tell you one that I I think is pretty funny. Uh, as as you know, being a Elvis fan and the president of a fan club, a good fan club, I might add. Um, you know, and everybody knows that Elvis was a practical joker. Yeah, he loved to play practical jokes on everybody and anybody anytime he could. And if he could get away with it without anybody knowing that it was him that did it, so much the better. Well. Same time after he'd played one on me, that it was payback time. So one of the stagehands, this was in Las Vegas. This was just uh, after the "That's the Way It Is." Or, no, I guess it was. It was during the "That's the Way It Is," but it was a night that they weren't filming. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you'll remember in "That's the Way It Is," when Elvis is going to do "Hound Dog," he gets down with the microphone. He says, "Yeah, what? This is a tender love ballad." You get that right down in the girl's face, and you say, baby, baby. Then you say, you ain't! And it blows her hair straight back, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know that just blew the sound guy's ears <laughs> off. Anyway, what you do, um, to, for the practical joke, I thought that one of the stagehands had an old basset hound dog that he brought to work with him every night. Beautiful old hound. And this dog loved a certain treat that, that his master had. And I got to talking to him, and I said, well, that dog follow, I mean, if you pitch that tree, but that dog follow, oh, he'll go get that tree. That's his most important priority. The brain is going, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be evil, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Elvis deserves this. So I talked to the stagehand. I said, here's what we're going to do, if he'll do it for me. And I'll get you employed if you get fired. <laughs> I said, what I want you to do is when Elvis gets down in that, starting that hound dog thing, I want you to get that hound ready and practice, get him ready for this. I want you to pitch that, roll that treat out so that it winds up right under Elvis's nose and, and have that dog follow it, you know? So the stagehand told me three or four days later that the dog was ready. I said, okay, you pick the night. And the night came and he, he nodded to me like, this is it. And uh, nobody else knew about it. Nobody else in the band, none of the people in the orchestra, none of the singers, nobody. It was just me and the stage head. We're putting our lives on the line here, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so I nod to him, and Elvis gets down, it's going to start that hound dog thing. And the stage head rolls that treat out perfectly. I mean, you couldn't have had a better putt shot if you were a golfer. And that treat wound up right under Elvis's nose. And here come that dog going for that treat, gets right on Elvis' nose, stares him in the face and gives him a big lick right up the face, you know, <laughs> you know, and Elvis, what? He turns around, all right, which one of you guys is responsible for this, <laughs> you know? And we're going, boss, we don't, you know, what are you accusing us for? We, we don't know anything about it. <laughs> He's, he, in his eyes, he said, you're lying, you know? Yeah. But he thought it was funny. And later, later, when we gathered in his dressing room after the show, to congratulate him on what a good show it was, and it was one of the magnificent shows. It should have been filmed, especially for that. Mm. He said, all right, all right. I know who it was. It was you, wasn't it, Wilkinson, pointing at me. I said, well, boss, why, why do you all of a sudden single me out? Because you're an animal lover, and you know that stagehand real good, and that's his dog, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. It's a good shot, John. <laughs> In the, in the movie Elvis on tour, yeah, um, Elvis seems a lot more serious in that movie than he did during That's the way it is. You got many memories of that. I mean, well, we, that I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no. Um, but again, on tour was around 1974, if I recall. 72. 72 was on tour. That's right. Yeah. Ah, time goes by. <laughs> and you have a good time. Well, anyway, uh, right about that time, uh, he started having some physical troubles. 
Yeah. Uh, and he began to have a lot of pain in his body and he wasn't having as much fun. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was due to some of the people who were around him who were supposed to be, and I say supposed to be, going out and getting new material for him to record were not doing so. Yeah. They weren't doing their job. And one of the things he couldn't stand was incompetence. Yeah. And yet he kept those people on. Yeah. Um, so on tour, yes, he was more serious. Uh, you'll notice on stage he wasn't as exuberant. Hmm. He wasn't bouncing around as much and moving quite as much. But that was due to two reasons. One, uh, his physical problems. He was starting to have an awful lot of pain portion through his body. Yeah. And also, he was very upset about the fact that he wasn't getting the material that he wanted to get because he was feeling so good about his new career, if you will. Yeah. And he started having hits uh, again on the radio, and he wasn't getting the good material. Mm -hmm. And he started having some personal problems in his own life, aside from the physical yeah. and the other things, too. Yeah. I mean, Elvis fans obviously just are fascinated by the stuff that we haven't seen. Oh, yes. Um, now, is it true that the, the recording sessions for On Tour, when he, he did, um, we, we know separate ways and always on mine was filmed, when he was wearing the red shirt with mm -hmm. the white, mm -hmm. like a scarf around his neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, was there a lot of those sessions filmed by MGM? There was, every single one of them, I think, right. was filmed. And MGM, to my knowledge, still has, and I wouldn't know how to put this into centimeters for you or anything, but there's literally thousands of feet of of coverage footage of rehearsals and of shows yeah. that they have not released yet. Mm. I, by my figuring, they probably have, they probably got another four and a half hours at least yeah. of, of footage that could be released yeah. into a new, into a new uh, release as a movie. Yeah, well, hopefully they will one day. Oh, I hope they do. <laughs> Do you recall how the Aloha show came around? What, how were you informed oh, that the Aloha show was going to yeah. happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, for months on end, we, we'd heard that there was something in the works. All of us musicians had heard that there was something big in the works that Elvis was going to be involved in. We were thinking maybe it's going to be some fantastic movie role for 